Berber Scree says, if you appreciate my help, then please hit subscribe. Subscribe right here. Subscribe. Oh, yep, right there. Subscribe. And if you like, maybe it would be helpful if you also like. Please like. Thank you very much, says the Berber Scree bird. Oh, yep. Yeah. Public service announcement from Mark Kilgore, the civil engineer, and Sosa the dog, and Bazekiel Bird. All right, so um, about about bed bugs. All right, and how to get rid of bed bugs. I'm just gonna tell you how to do it. Okay, first of all. I've got to tell you that you need to educate yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We've got to do something about this distraction here. Come here. Daddy's not going to beat you up. Daddy's just going to take you in here. Go do what you need to do, okay? Look at him. Okay. All right. First of all, once you realize that you have bed bugs, you need to educate yourself. And the best way to educate yourself is YouTube.com. And I've got to tell you, you need to watch two videos for sure. One is this. This lady's video here from, from uh, that channel. What not to do if you have bed bugs. Dr. Susan Jones, Ohio State University. What not to do if you have a bed bug infestation. Basically. That you need to watch. I did that one day. And then you definitely need to watch this. And it's also by CCBHNet. Jeff White here. This fellow. Bed bug management strategies that work. Jeff White, Bed Bug Central. Gosh. This guy is just determined to try to ruin our video, isn't he? Okay. So, got it? You watch this video, What Not to Do If You Have Bed Bugs, by Dr. Susan Jones. And you watch this video, Jeff White here, Bed Bug Management Strategies That Work. Jeff White. All right. That's important, and it's also important to know the stages of a bed bug. Here are eggs. I've got to confess, I've never seen any eggs that I know of. Here are first stage dudes. They're nowhere near that big. Like, they're like a speck. Like, I, th I just saw some. For, for probably the first time this last week they were uh, infested on a futon anyhow so my understanding is this all right the eggs are there they they're laid from a female and just a second scree quiet in fact I'll just make sure he's going to be quiet. I'll put him in the dark. All right. Now, back to business here. Now, my understanding is this. Eggs are laid. This is just the basics. Okay. Basic training here of bed bugs. Eggs are laid. They're hatched out. So they're first level uh, bed bugs. Or nymphs, I understand them to be called. Okay. Let's call them babies. And they've never eaten, okay? They've never fed. The only thing they feed on is blood, like blood of a human or blood of a dog or cat, for example. Okay? And so then once they've, each time they feed, then they go hide and they uh, molt and shed and become the next level bed bug. Feed and shed and become the next level bed bug. Feed and shed and become the next level bed bug. Feed and shed and become the next level bed bug. Feed and shed, and and then 
And there we are. Then you're a big bed bug. Then you're a real problem because female can be laying eggs. Now, let's get more into and 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 that's not the only one you can find all kinds of of these out here but generally it looks like they have to go bam one two three four five or what was the one that I was on here this one I believe yep one two three four five Okay, I guess just five feedings and then you're an adult, all right? And I think, uh, okay, next thing we're going to cover in, in the basics here is it says, okay, only females can lay eggs, all right? Females must feed to lay eggs. All right, you know what feeding is. That means they, they must uh, creep up on you when you sleep and uh, suck your blood for about three to 10 minutes and then they go back into hiding. They don't even wanna lay around with you in your bed or on your pillow because they don't want your body heat. They uh, prefer it a little bit cooler. They just endure the uh, heat for just a little bit because they need to get your blood. Okay, females must feed to lay eggs. She produces between 3 and 12 eggs a day in the ideal environment and can produce up to 500 eggs in a lifetime. The eggs generally hatch within 7 to 12 days and the newly hatched bug is called a nymph. The nymph looks like a beige colored adult and turns a reddish color after feeding. After shedding its skin five times, five times again, the nymph reaches adulthood, according to the WebMD website. Location, females seek out dark crevices to lay their eggs where food is readily available. This makes bedding the optimal location. Signs of a bed bug infestation include dark spots and stains on mattresses that result from feces and shedding skin from the nymphs. Uh, engorged or crushed bed bugs may also leave red or rust colored smears on your bed sheets. Okay, look, I've, I've got to tell you, I mean, there's no shame in it because it could happen to anyone. I've been hit by bed bugs. I've been hit by bed bugs at least two times. And you know how I knew it in the, in, uh, was in, in the morning Right here on the corner, there was uh, like uh, blood, some spots of blood here, and 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 uh, then the other time, it was spots. Of, sorry, so so, it was spots of blood here on the other uh, corner, and uh, in both cases, I uh, searched the the bed, and uh, found the 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 bed bug. Well, actually, um, I the the first the first time or maybe even the second time this happens to you, you're probably being naive and uh, in some denial or, or whatever, but then you get right on it. Let's just say this, the second time that I got hit and there was blood, I, I, I found it at uh, noon time. I should have found it in, in the morning time. And uh, I immediately uh, caught the bug and I gotta say the bug was engorged. That bug was full and I destroyed the bug. Now I've got to say one of the first things that I've done is uh, in case the box springs in uh, a, uh, a uh, you know a bug barrier um, deal. I mean you can go to Target. This cost uh, forty dollars. If I if I need to go to the next step and do the mattress, I can. Uh, that one I think costs. Fifty dollars, or maybe this bottom one's fifty and the top one's sixty. It's something like that at Target. All right. And uh, but right now I'm I'm just uh, doing a thorough inspection on this mattress, and uh, all the time. And uh, and I've got to say the first time that, that I got hit, and and it was about uh, three days before I put 
put it all together and and, and uh, well, well uh, just saw the bed bug right there uh, dumb bed bug that's about three days or something after I got hit I gotta say in all these folds and stuff because they like to hide in folds and crevices uh, you know uh, that, that that dude will educate you and so will Susan Jones there and um, uh, I sprayed some uh, bed bug uh, egg killer in there just to be sure and uh, anyhow you gotta be totally vigilant on top of your game these are climb up traps uh, that's for the uh, dog bed uh, that's, that's for the platform for the dog bed that I made because you gotta make it so the only way up and you can see the only way up oh am I in violation right here really close really close you see that almost was in violation I'm gonna go ahead and move it a little bit so it'll be a little bit more into the good all right and I, I've got to tell you I've employed a spider I don't know where he is right now but I saw him and he's grown he was uh, <clears throat> I saw him today. I'm employing him. And uh, someone said, well, uh, uh, what's his pay? I said the pay is uh, he can uh, eat all the bed bugs that he can catch and kill. All right, so back to more education. OK. How fast do bed bugs spread? I'm, I'm sorry, breed. And by the way, we're going to see the poor, poor man's bed bug heater. You're going to be impressed. How fast do bed bugs breed? Is a question I've been asked several times recently. <clears throat> what people want to know is how fast will a bed bug problem grow after bed bugs are introduced to their home? It is not an easy question to answer because the answer is different in different situations. Let's just uh, get to here. Recent work has found that you should not expect a population explosion before three to months. All right, here we're gonna go. Month one, if a single pregnant female is introduced to a bedroom, perhaps as the result of bringing one home after traveling and staying in an infested hotel, or for example, a guest comes over and, and deposits one, it is likely that there will still be only one breeding adult one month after introduction. However, there will be as many as 60 nymphs in various stages of development and 20 to 30 eggs. When bed bugs hatch from an egg, they are very small and unlikely to be seen by the naked eye. You hear that? The little bed bugs, once they hatch, are unlikely to be seen by the naked eye. And I can attest to that. The only reason I saw them was because they were against a black cloth and I was looking for them. I was really looking for them and I had a, a bright light on my forehead. Uh, the bugs go through five stages of growth. It says instars. Each growth stage requires a blood feed. <clears throat> so they have to uh, hit you, is what I call it. They have to feed on you. They have to hit you in order to level up. And, and once they've leveled up five times, they're an adult. That, that means go ahead and count them as a breeder. Only in the final adult stage is a bed bug able to lay eggs. You get that only in the final adult stage. That means once they're an adult, once they've done it five times, then they're a bed bug that's able to lay eggs. <clears throat> Month two, there is likely to be less than 10 adult bed bugs, but as many as 150 nymphs and a few eggs. A few eggs, right. Now things start to hot up with as many as 100 month three again now things start to hot up with as many as 100 adults and 1,000 nymphs and eggs month four by day 120 the bed bug population is into exponential growth phase with up to 200 adults 5,000 nymphs and 2,000 eggs month six if there is sufficient blood to feed on and places to hide an infestation could now be at enormous populations and would undoubtedly have spread to all adjacent rooms. There could be 8,000 adults over there could be 8,000 adults over 1,000 100,000 nymphs and 70,000 eggs. This scenario shows that early detection and treatment of bed bugs is vital. 
carrying out a thorough inspection of a bed and bedroom as soon as there is any suspicion of bed bugs and treatment all right that was that's from uh, pest-advice.com all right what was the other site that that was this one here animals.mom.me and I've got to say I highly recommend bedbugsupply.com I just uh, ordered my second order climb-ups were in the first order I ordered more climb-ups now they work I've had them for just a little over a week in the uh, room uh, next to here there have been I would say five or more bed bugs caught in the first week uh, including an adult and over here there have been like uh, three or four caught in the first week. Now, what's really important, the poor man, uh, okay, let's see, and, and what, I've, what I've ordered, don't, there is no need to use diatomaceous earth, I, I don't really recommend it, alright? I ordered a steamer this time for a hundred dollars from uh, Bed Bug Supply. Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> Because really, these uh, bed bug heaters are too expensive. I'm, I mean, these these little ones here, for whatever they are, one hundred and eighty dollars, two hundred dollars. That's you stick something in there, and and uh, and it heats it up. I mean, to me, that's worthless. All right. And the cheapest room heater is uh, for uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. But I've got I've got I've got a bed bug uh, room heater for a hundred dollars. I'm a civil engineer, okay. And uh, I've done a little bit of thinking on this. Like here here's my uh, last order here. Um, Ten, or, or I'm sorry, large climb up uh, inter bed bug interceptor monitors and traps. Uh, two boxes of them, twelve twelve in each box. Uh, Thirty-six dollars uh, times two, seventy-two dollars, and then uh, the uh, steamer. The steam, and I'll show you the steamer that I ordered right there. Ninety-nine dollars, a hundred dollars here. This Amico steamer. It claims to shoot out um, forty-three psi, uh, two hundred degree uh, jet of stream. I don't know how far. And anyhow, now, this room was the one that was uh, infested. Uh, the uh, person was uh, nasty. Anyhow, is now 2.05. And we've got, uh, what we've got on here is we've got, uh, there's a thermometer that's located in there that's being monitored, monitored last it was, is 125 and then there's about a 10 degree temperature differential of like uh, when the thermometer was on top of the table so we're about to go in at uh, 2.05 a.m. I've got to say this first of all at 6.40 or 6.45 p.m. I began running five uh, electric heaters uh, one from the room, one from that room, and three from these extension cords throughout the house so as to not trip fuses. And I uh, was able to uh, heat the house, was able to heat that room up to where that temperature, that thermometer, well, it was, let's just say I think it was about 110 degrees on the table, and it was about 100, 100 degrees uh, cl uh, on the window ledge where I've got it. Uh, right now and then I started uh, I shut all the vents in the house uh, that I could and uh, began to run the house heat continuously and the house heat has run continuously oh it started about 1230 it's now 205 it's still running okay because it's 74 degrees in here and I set uh, it to be 85 degrees so the house heat which is a brand new heater, a hundred thousand BTU heater, a hundred thousand BTU heater, 
at a 96% efficient gas heater. <clears throat> Not a bed bug, okay. Um, anyhow, poor man's bed bug heater. Look at this, dude. Seriously. All right, I bought this propane tank here. Uh, 20, whatever it is, what? 20 gallon or whatever, I think that's the units. Uh, tank here, $50. I bought uh, this heater here from, uh, what is it? From Zobo, Z-O-B-O -O is the brand. All right, I've got it on high here. It's been running since 1238. <clears throat> Look at this uh, thermometer over here. You tell me what temperature it says it is. I'm going to call it 127 degrees. That's the best I can read it. 127 degrees right there, okay? So, on this table, there is a table under there. Uh, I did have it. There was about a 10 degree temperature differential. So, maybe if it's uh, 127 over here, it might be 137 degrees over here where now this dog bed is sitting. And they say, and I've got to believe them because many videos have said this that uh, at 120 degrees if you can get to 120 degrees the, uh, that a bed bug will die within less than one minute uh, 120 degrees is the critical temperature and a bed bug will die within less than one minute. This is the room where the infestation started. So I decided I'm gonna heat treat, which is the most effective and sure way to treat. All the bed bug professionals will tell you that unless they're lying to you. I decided to heat treat it, you know. 120, at 120 degrees, they say, all bed bugs, all eggs, all bed bug everything all activity will be dead at 120 degrees within less than one minute okay so what do we got like it again about 127 and that's over here by the window okay we'll 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 set it we'll, we'll set it over here by the window let's set it over here by the window let's say a bed bug ran all the way over there by the window let's see how good they would be doing okay in just a second but all these items I've set in here because, you know, those bed bug heaters that cost like $200 or something or $190 from bed bug supply. At least they do free shipping, which is really good. Look at mine, my bed bug heater, $100 plus all these electric heaters that I already had, extension cords and the house heat. I'm getting out of here for a second because it's too hot. By the way, here's my uh, platform for the dog bed that I constructed. There are the legs. Let me show you where the legs fit. There's the dog that sleeps on the on the dog bed. I decided to do this to his toys. I should grab the rest of the toys and sit on the climb ups. And they work. Uh, you just uh, have to watch the dog because the dog's not nearly as conscious about keeping uh, the situation uncompromised as a as a person, you know. So you have to watch like if if I give the dog a blanket, invariably. Uh, there's going to be violations, you know, and uh, bugs will be able to crawl up. I got to tell you, for instance, a roach was on, on the bed, which should have been caught in the climb-ups, I would think. Uh, and, uh, and there was a spider there. And I know the spider was, the spider before was caught in this climb-up, so I know he can't get out of the climb-ups. And, uh, and uh, anyway, I let the spider go because he's in my employ, but I killed the roach. I was going to hold it against the spider that he was, uh, well, the dog was laying backwards on the bed and he was kind of falling off of his bed. And I, and I caught the spider, was right underneath the dog, and I was like, oh, you spider, are you biting my dog? And, uh, and I, I was like, if you are, you know, then you'll be gone. So I put like strike one on the spider. But then when I, I picked up the bed and moved it, because I was uh, going to start doing some stuff, uh, be 
you know, go through protocol and, and do new things and stuff to combat these bed bugs. And then I saw the roach. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, you get a pass, then you were probably hunting the roach. Good spider. <sighs> All right, let these, let these uh, birds have some light again. Oh, poor little Hester. So, and uh, back to again to overall strategy. In case your box springs, for sure, you want to you you, you want to take the additional step and spend the other fifty or sixty dollars or whatever it is. Say it's fifty for the bottom, okay, for the box springs, and then sixty for the top. You know, uh, and and I probably should. I'm probably being silly, not doing it. I'm being a little bit risky. Um, but uh, $60 and I could encase the top you know and so then there'd be just this thing and uh, I stopped uh, sleeping with a blanket I just only sleep with this sheet and with my pillows and every week I take uh, off uh, everything that's on the bed and wash it uh, including I take uh, the uh, sheets off the pillows and I turn them and I sometimes do inspections. Uh, well, I guess I do inspections at the same time when I take them off uh, to do laundry. I turn them inside out and make sure there's no bed bugs or no activity, anything like that. I never have found anything like that. Never have found any eggs or any nymphs or youngins or anything on the bed. Just two adults, and I know I got hit two times. Uh, there, uh, here are my climb ups. And I bought these uh, pads to sit them on. I thought it would be good to uh, protect. I figured the climb ups would break faster if I don't have these. So here's the view under my bed. Climb up. Climb up. Climb up. Climb up. Climb up. And climb up. There it is. Doubtful that we'll find any any guy in there, but what is where do we get? You know, they act like things can be, like a bed bug can be caught on the inner layer. And I'm like, oh, really? I mean, it's true, he can't get up, but uh, he'd just go back up the bed leg. He'd just go back up the bed leg. So, uh, I say once they're on the bed, then it's, it's too late. And that's why they say, well, in case the box springs. I agree. Uh, like, uh, like Jeff will tell you on, on that video, just go ahead and assume that uh, you know uh, that that is uh, infected in your back spring. I'm curious, like you are, what that is. I don't think it's a bed bug, but. Uh, I'll say, I don't think it's a bed bug, but there could be bed bugs in there. And, uh, let me ask you this. Would you, would you want it to be an adult bed bug, or would you want it to be a baby bed bug? I've got to tell you, 
I'd prefer it to be a baby because they've got to get to be an adult, remember again, to breed. So, and, uh, and so anyway, you uh, encase your mattress, uh, you, I mean, your, your box springs, just go ahead and encase your mattress, let's say, and uh, inspect, you know, between them and stuff, you know, look up and make sure that things are all good and go all around, like I, I go all in here and look with a light on my head, same thing up, up here, and I, when I strip it off, of course, I'm looking at the top and uh, everything. And uh, so it's a bed bug safe island and, and all this stuff like this has been freshly washed, okay? Been freshly washed. Everything here on the bed has been freshly washed and dried. So that means the bed bugs have been killed. And plus, I'll, I've got to tell you, I've set the water heater at 150 degrees. So I've set it at the maximum temperature that it can take or that it can uh, make the water 150 degrees. So when I start uh, the, my laundry, and I always set it on hot, that water is pumping out at 150 degrees. That means it's killing any bed bugs instantly. And then it goes through the dryer, and, then, and that's getting it up to at least 120 degrees dry. And that would kill a bed bug as well. Let's see what we've got now. So oh, I gotta tell you now, overall, so overall investment, well, I gotta tell you, uh, spray and sticky traps. Sticky traps are a joke, do not ever do that. Uh, this is the uh, spray that I sprayed for bed bug killer on, uh, you know, after that first one hit me. And I figured it might have had three or four days to run around on the bed before I caught it. The second one again, I caught uh, within, um, you know, eight, eight hours or less of uh, when it got me. And, uh, and foggers, don't ever use foggers. Don't, don't use the diatomaceous earth, okay? Uh, just stick with uh, the infer number one, encasement. Number two, climb ups. Keep it clear. You know, there's no way for any bed bug to get on there unless they were able to climb all the way up the wall, if, if they were smart enough, and then all the way over here, and then drop onto the bed, which, uh, uh, I don't believe that's going to happen. I mean, I can maybe imagine it in the case of a super major infestation that that might be happening just occasionally, but you'd already have um, a bunch that were just already on your bed. And uh, so encasement, climb up traps, inspections, uh, laundry, um, I'm getting a steamer, so I steam the carpets and the corners and stuff like that. Steam anything you want to. Steam your dog beds, steam your pillows, uh, steam your electronic equipment, um, steam your clothes if you want to. Now back to the uh, poor man's bed, bed bug heater. Again, $100. Okay, again, we're going to give you total investment. By the way, there's Williams traps and stuff. I haven't invested in that yet. I was thinking about making some. I bought uh, some materials to be able to do so. But let's go for total investment. I'd say um, 48 climb ups. About $150. All right. And uh, box spring encasement that was fifty dollars okay then um, and I, I'm not counting the things that I got that I wouldn't recommend you, you getting so I'm just gonna keep it like this for you um, the uh, the pads which I bought at Home Depot seven inch diameter pads which doesn't seem like any other pad less than that is good because the climb ups tend to slip off of them. Um, pads, uh, sliders, let's call them. For with 
climb ups. Oh gosh, uh, I think forty dollars. I actually got some other ones and wasted some. Let's say in the end, I'm gonna spend maybe fifty dollars on that. I think they're worthwhile. Um, and then the uh, I'm gonna get the steamer for a hundred dollars. I ordered that, and uh, that is a 200 degrees, 43 psi jet steamer, and then the. Poor man's bed bug room heater, $100, baby, is all you need. Okay. Um, that was uh, $50 for the Zobo heater. And $50 for the 20, what was it, gallon uh, propane. So what's that all add up to be? 150 plus 50, we'll do a sum column over here. 150, 200, 250, 350, and then 100, 450. 450 now I already oh that's not it already had uh, five space heaters so I'm counting those at zero now I did have to get extension cords let's say uh, about forty dollars in that. Four hundred and ninety dollars. May as well call it five hundred dollars. All right. And that's your uh, bed bug kit that that uh, if if you use it smartly should kill, and you won't you won't have the problem anymore. So they started out in that room. I'm doing that room right now, obviously. And I, th I think all the bed bugs are killed in it, unless they're hidden really good in the walls or whatever and stuff, and uh, and uh, or the outlets or whatever. When I get that steamer coming, I'm going to steam into those outlets a little bit, and uh, then tomorrow I'm going to do that bedroom. That's a, a closet there, and uh, if they're if they're living in there. Then uh, just as they come out, we'll get them. I, you know, don't think I'm sure there's no major in there, and and then uh, and then I uh, will do my room uh, third, and I don't think that there will be any need to do any more rooms. Uh, I've had climb ups on that couch, and it's got nothing. And no surprise, I guess, because nobody sleeps on the couch. And I sure wouldn't allow anyone to sleep on the couch. And I would not allow myself to take a nap on the couch uh, right now. It seems like they only are supposed to be coming after you when you're sleeping. Dog, what are you doing sleeping on the floor? Go lay down in your bed before I spank you. Come on, go. Oh, where's your bed? Oh, any little beds in here in this hot room? Okay, let's take a recording here. I think I've uh, given all my uh, knowledge. So 2.20 the time is 2.26 a.m. November 19th 2017 2.26 yeah, I jumped in here because I thought I smelled something burning. Okay.
Let's see how the bed bug did that that uh, got over here. Oh man, I'd say I'd say he's fried because even if he's over here right next to the window, and, and you know I gotta admit there was uh, air coming in here, and so I did some insulating on the edges here. And I did some uh, caulking with silicone and it made a world of difference. Now there's no breeze or anything like that at all. wonder how many dollars that's cost me over the years. Anyhow, right over here, what are we going to call that? What do you call that? Tell me. Call it 125. It could be 126, but 125, let's say. All right, let's just say that, uh, that a bed bug was hanging out right there, okay? The heater in here is shut off because it's so hot. The heater here is shut off because it's so hot. This heater is still going. The radiant heater has not shut off. Nor has this radiant heater shut off. Then what do we got here? I mean, I'll call it like 128 or something. You know, what, what? I don't really want to talk about my thermometer. I'm, I'm done. Hey, Ricky, you still up? All right, come on. You 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 got to check out my work one time. I'm I'm gonna turn it off right now, but you got to come check it out before I turn it off. Well, well, come look. I'm going to write it down real quick first before I forget. And uh, 120, 128 at least. Let's say in there all across the room. All right. Done. Uh, Lord God Jesus bless you. Kill all the bed bugs in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, one more thing I do feel obligated to say is about this uh, DE powder, you know, and, and why I said one of the reasons why I said I would never use it. It's not very effective and it will definitely never cure your bed bug problem. That uh, Jeff uh, tells us that. But what I did uh, one day is I caught a bed bug. And so he was perfectly healthy. Um, he had, uh, I believe he had fed on me actually within like the last uh, three or four days. And so I was like, well, let's test out the DE. So I took this bed bug, handled him with tweezers uh, after I initially caught him and stuck him in this, uh, or let's just, no, I, I just grabbed him and I stuck him in this uh, little uh, small glass uh, jar or bottle. And um, I uh, sprinkled the DE powder in there uh, and it was on him and he walked through it and everything. And he was still walking through it and, and everything and fine for two hours uh, before he... Uh, uh, was turned over on his back, but he didn't die for like 15 hours. He was definitely still alive after 12, after 13 hours. But eventually, when I checked him at the 15 hour point, he was finally dead. So, I mean, and that's with it caked on him and got nowhere to go except for being in fresh DE powder. You're not ever gonna get that optimal of a thing. I mean, so. I mean, come on, they could probably walk right through the stuff and be fine. <clears throat> and even if they weren't fine, you know, they could have laid all kinds of eggs 
within the uh, 24 hours or so at best uh, optimally let's say before they get killed or at at very best 15 hours as we've shown they could have laid all kinds of eggs in that time that's all another thing to say whenever I vacuum or whenever I uh, pull out uh, baddies from the uh, climb ups by the way how you do that is uh, supposed to use cotton swabs but I use paper towels and dip them in uh, alcohol and uh, very gently swipe them around twice I recommend and extremely gently and with a bright light shining on it inspect what you got you know and then pull it out over your hand get it uh, wrapped up in and scrunched up in a paper towel real quick and uh, whenever I do that or whenever I vacuum I take uh, like for, with the vacuum a vacuum and then I take it outside and dump it quickly in the fire pit pour gasoline on it light it on fire so basically any potential uh, bed bugs that I end up with um, caught in the vacuum cleaner or in the climb ups uh, they get burnt they have no chance they don't get put in the trash inside for to climb out again they don't even get put in the trash outside for to have a chance to do something they get burnt more to add about bed bugs I mean they have their weaknesses they can't jump they cannot run uh, you know I, I've tested them out I've I've put uh, one on a piece of paper towel and lit one edge of it on fire so I know how fast they can run they can't run they they can walk relatively fast for themselves you know but uh, it's just they just amble along um, they have weaknesses. They cannot take 120 degrees heat in the air, even. You know, much less water. 120 degrees. Uh, what they what they do have is uh, it's it's amazing uh, the exhibited intelligence that they have, and they I guess not too much of a surprise as they are an agent of the devil, and I guess. He's the one who gives them their information, like, how do they know how to hide so well? How do they know to go down to the bottom of a bed and then go uh, sneak up into hiding places? You know, how do, they, how do they know to not ever do it in a visible spot? If only this dog could talk, he would tell you. back to their weaknesses so they have to uh, do they have to feed five times to get to be an adult five times five different times they have to feed and then uh, go away for three or four days and uh, shed their skin that is mold and be bigger and uh, be ready to come at it again but you you have to let if you if you're the only prey in the in the house the only host that is you have no no pets like Sosa and by the way you better check your your dog's uh, and cat's bed or whatever um, they if you're the only prey in the house the only host in the house you have to let a bed bug hit you five times before he gets to be an adult. You have to let him level up on you five times before he gets to be an adult. They have weaknesses. The last correction that I can think to make. I said that these dudes have to level up six times to get to you. Let's call... Um, hold on just a second. I think I made a little illustration. Yeah, here we go trying to roughly go for the actual size of these fellers here um, 
let's call it egg a level zero, a little tan dot, uh, level one, and level two, level three, level four, level five, and then level six adults. So uh, they're born, they become level one, have to get to level six to be an adult, that would be five level ups, all right? I was wrong about, there's one fewer level up than I had stated to get to be an adult, which means you can then reproduce. Yeah. And by the way, I checked uh, the traps in this bedroom and that bedroom. Uh, there's no bed in, in the first bedroom that I did now. And there was, there were two dead adults over there. One had been on the inside of the climb up trap, which means that he had been on the well, I mean, he had been on the uh, frame of the bed. Um, and then there was one found over there on the, in the other room that had been running around the outside. And then in uh, my room, I found one dead one uh, in the bottom center trap here. So three dead adults uh, found in and or around the traps uh, the next day. So certainly got to the killing zone of temperature. Which, uh, which again, once one to visit again, I picked a cold spot in the room uh, out of the possible spots that I, I was to test. I tested them all, saw what was the coldest temperature, found it to be on the windowsill. In, in the case, in every room, it was on the windowsill. Uh, this is cold weather outside time right now. And, and in each case, I took that... Uh, spot of cold weather up to eventually 128 degrees that was pretty much the most that my thermometer can register i was aiming for at least 125 i got to 128 so in the first room 60 minutes of 125 plus and about 25 minutes of 128 second room did 60 to 70 minutes of 128, 100 minutes of uh, 120 plus. I guess I'm calling 120 plus a kill zone. And then uh, in my room, did uh, 40 minutes of ideal, meaning 128 plus in the cold spot. And uh, yep, 40 minutes of 128. So that's uh, plenty of heat. Uh, the, on the web today, uh, well, everything I've heard says 120 degrees kills. Today I saw one website that says 117 degrees to 123 degrees. Um, so if you can get to 125, they're dead. Then you just have to worry about them hiding like uh, in clothes, you know. The deeper that they can get into a mess, the more... Um, insulation that they have and the more chance they would have to survive and that's also why you keep the heat on for a long time and as far as building the heat up slowly I don't know any other way to build the heat up other than the slowly so that's that happy hunting thank you Lord God Jesus amen a little endorsement for the Williams traps and this is what I'm doing to this way I can see that they're still producing. Last night was the first night that I tried the Williams trap and caught one level six. That is an adult male and one level one that is a baby. And since then, uh, it's caught one this afternoon while I was taking a nap, taking a nap. And that one has been in my bedroom. Thank you, Lord God Jesus. There have been some over here in this bedroom.
but I just I want to condone the uh, Williams method traps. They do make results, and these are in climb ups, which I highly recommend. All right, this is a level one dude. He says, oh, what's up with that? I don't like that. He says, I'm, feel I'm feeling challenged. Or, I'm feeling hungry. Oh, you oh, want to eat, don't you? You want to come eat, don't you? Oh, you're tempted, aren't you? Level one, dude. Level one, not level two, level one. Level one, dude. Now I'm going to show you what you do with them. Here is what you do with those dudes. You wrap them up securely. You secure them. They're securely secured. Yes, they are. This paper towel has a little bit of alcohol on it. Like, I think 90% isopropyl alcohol. Then you take them outside and you put them to the fire pit like that and you do it like this and you go, oh, can, can, uh, can you find a way to survive? Can you find a way to survive in that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not likely. Not likely to happen. Not likely to happen, so you're going to survive in that. Little problem child. Little problem child. Little problem child. He's a problem child. And he's wild. Mm -hmm. That's what you do with the bed bugs. Now I'm going to run the vacuum cleaner.